this edition of Saving American Energy, we travel to Arena Offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. For half the year and in 12-hour shifts, these patriots are working at sea in one of the most challenging environments imaginable. Not every barrel is created equally, and you'll find out why next. We're here to save American energy. Growing up in the energy capital of the world, Houston, Texas, I learned the value of hard work. I also learned that without the grit of Americans working every day to provide us with energy, the lights will go out. We are fighting to make sure that that never happens. I'm Wesley Hunt, and I'm running for Congress to restore, defend, and preserve American energy independence. But I can't do it alone. That's why I'm traveling the country in search of the brave, patriotic, and innovative leaders that power our lives. I want to tell their stories and change the conversation from energy transition to energy addition. Together, we're safe American energy. The next stop on saving American energy puts us smack dab in the heart of the Gulf. Over the past 22 years, Arena Energy has grown into one of the largest private offshore oil and gas companies. And it's easy to see why when you meet the incredible people spending six months at sea to provide us with energy. First up is Arena Drilling Manager Steve Mintz, who gives us the full rig tour. How are you doing, Wesley Hunt? Uh, Steve Metz. It's good to meet you. And what, do you. and what do you do for Arena Offshore? I'm the uh, drilling manager for Arena Offshore. So I supervise activities for all the offshore uh, Gulf of Mexico work. Excellent. And what's your like day to day like? Uh, lots of engineering work, well designed, operations calls, and just kind of keeping up the day to day operation, keeping uh, keeping the rig running. And it takes a lot to keep a drilling rig running especially in 50 feet of water. The manpower, technology, and engineering needed to keep this modern Marvel operational is amazing. Steve has agreed to introduce us to some of the personnel aboard this operation. Now, now how many personnel do you have working on a rig at any given time? Uh, your crew, crew yeah, confidence. 50 to 60? Yeah, 50 to 60? yeah. yeah this, okay. uh, you, you guys can uh, house, what, 82? Yeah. yeah. Yep. We can house 82. Do you house 82? Yep, okay. but usually our normal crew complement, sometimes we may go up to, you know, somewhere 60, 70 if it's like, you know, really, really busy activities, but normally it's probably 50, 60 people depending on operation. And you're working shifts? Yeah. So, so half, have one half of the day, the other half have the other 12-hour yeah. shifts? Yeah, these guys are working 6 to 6, so 6 a.m., 6 p.m., and the other guys come on. Okay. 24-7. Then and how long do they usually stay out here? What, what duration of time? 14 days. Yeah. And then they go back in for how long? 14. 14, 14 days and they're, they're back out here 14 days. Yep. So right. half the time. Half the time. Half your life. For six months at home. That's, uh, that's what they, this is this is home for these guys, you know. Uh, yes. They, they take pride in it, you know. I mean, uh, you figure they spent half their life out here. So uh, they definitely uh, take well, pride in keeping them. it up. Absolutely. Yeah. These guys work. It's like a deployment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> it is. It's yeah. like a deployment. Yeah, it is. Very good. Yep. Six months a year away from home is very much like a deployment. Now imagine doing it for roughly half a century. As we head up to the drilling shack, we meet Ronnie, who has worked in oil and gas for 52 years. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Pleasure. Yes, sir. Ronnie, how long you been working for Arena? 16 years. 16 years. 16 years. You've been working in the oil field, Ronnie. Are you serious? Get out of here. Are you still working, huh? He's he's our young gun right here. So 51 years in the industry. 52 years in the industry. Graduated, made it to the time, June of 16. Oh, good for you. Never stop. Where are you from originally? Hey, Okay. Thank you for all you do. We really appreciate you. Working hard. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can. I can see that. Why do you say them for retire? Well, don't retire. We don't want to allow them to. They want to know. They, they want to make sure they retire. So you know what? I, if I don't call you and tell you, because I didn't know either. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny, right? We're drilling a hole, you know, eight and a half inches. Yeah. You know, this big, and we're drilling it to a target, you know, that's, you know, probably smaller than 20 feet. Yeah. And we're drilling that two miles down. 
You know, it's just it's incredible the technology that goes into it. That, you know, most people don't understand. 20 feet. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously the reservoir is huge, but yeah, I, yeah, but the but the geologists, you know, they pick a spot on the map and they say, hey, you know, here's your target, right? And I'd say normally our error on that is probably within 20, 20 feet. feet. Yeah. So I mean, it's just you know with the. Uh, you know, the technology that's evolved over the last, you know, 10, 15 years with rotary steerables and stuff, yes. I mean, they can just precision drilling, you know, and you see that onshore, you know, these guys that are nav navigating these laterals, you know, yes. and, and geo steering and things like that, you know, the, the amount of technology that goes in these wells is just incredible. Yeah, people think that, you know, you're just drilling in into that's this big, big, big oil patch, you know, and just sticking a pipe in there and just sucking it out, but, you know, that's it's not like, the case. absolutely, <laughs> man, it's very complex. It may be a complex process to produce produce oil from the Gulf of Mexico, but technologically it's never been safer to drill offshore than it is right now. And as we learned during our tour, the Gulf of Mexico is a world-class basin for oil and natural gas exploration and development. The natural resources in the Gulf can be produced cleaner than in most places in the world, and that's happening right here at Arena Offshore. The CEO of Arena Energy, Mike Minarovic, agreed to sit down with us for an honest conversation about the contributions domestic oil and gas producers have made to the economy and the challenges they face in an effort to keep America moving forward. First of all, thank you so much for having me here. Really, 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 thank you so much for having us. And as you know, we're doing a Saving America Energy Tour. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Yeah. And it's our goal to tell the truth about the industry, talk about how important it is, not just to our country, to the globe. And please introduce yourself and tell us what role that you play in American energy. Yeah, well, I'm Mike Minarvik. I'm a CEO of Arena Energy. We're a privately held company focused on the Gulf of Mexico, shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico. We've been in business almost uh, 23 years. Excellent. Excellent. 23 years. Yeah. Now, how long have you been in the industry itself? Uh, I've been in the business since uh, getting out of college uh, 35 years ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of hearing that story a lot from a lot of people that work here on the rig. They've been in the industry for 30, 40 years. Yeah. And basically, it's like a lot of service because they spend literally almost half their lives on rigs just like this. That's right. We met a guy this afternoon who's been out here for 52 years. 52 working years. In the Gulf of Mexico. This June. 52 yeah. years this June. So it's quite remarkable. So earlier we were talking about a few things and uh, especially kind of what, what the economic ramifications are mm -hmm. um, for our industry and for a rig like this. Could you kind of touch on the high level points that we were talking about earlier? Yeah, you know, I would just say that the, you know, the world needs around 100 million barrels of oil every day. Yeah. You know, we may be doing some things that reduces that over time and that'd be good in some ways as we look at different alternatives. But for a long time, we're going to need a lot of oil. So we've got to decide where that oil is coming from. And the United States should be producing its own oil from its own basin. And the yeah. federal waters of the Gulf of Mexico is a perfect place to do so. And in the Gulf of Mexico, the government gets somewhere around 17% right off the top as far as royalties go. Yeah. And then they get all the tax revenues that are generated uh, on a corporate level. And then also the employees that are working out here. And we employ a lot of really highly skilled and highly paid people to work out here yes. offshore and they're paying taxes and their families are are being supported by this industry so yeah I can't imagine it as we need oil um, this would be the best place to get it from and the, in addition to that is the oil that comes out of the Gulf of Mexico is some of the cleanest oil that we can get in the entire world and the reason for that generally is that we're a very highly regulated industry. For 70 years we've been drilling wells in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. For 70 years the federal government has been regulating that drilling, the production, all the equipment that's out there. And so it's, uh, you know, it's a highly regulated uh, environment. That's certainly not the case where we get oil from you know, Nigeria or from Iraq or from Saudi Arabia, Russia. You know, those places aren't going to be as nearly clean and highly regulated. And with the Gulf of Mexico, we produce our oil into centralized locations and platforms that process that oil, put it right back down a pipeline, send it to shore. So it really isn't exposed to the atmosphere for a very limited amount of time and usually under pressure. So it's a completely controlled environment, and that's why we have the lowest greenhouse gas emissions that, that any oil that you can find in the country and in the world, honestly. The next time you put your feet in a sandy beach and look out onto the horizon, remember the men and women of oil and gas as they work offshore to power the nation. Perhaps one of them will be looking back at you. Six months a year, 12-hour shifts, 
and some who have given more than a half a century of their own lives to power America. That's the story of Arena Energy. That's the story of American Energy. And that's why it's worth saving. We need more of them, not less. And that's how you save American energy. Next time on Saving American Energy, we head west to witness firsthand the technology Crestwood is using to power our country. And we learn that oil and gas does more than just provide us with energy.